Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are at the beginning of the 2024-25 offseason. Uh, the Royals are coming off an 83-79 and 79 season. Uh, we finished third in the American League Central. A uh, bit of a disappointing season given our expectations heading in. Uh, the only positive thing is that the team that we lost to by three games in the division went on to win the World Series championship, the Twins beating the Cardinals four games to two. So uh feel that we're really not that far away. We um, led the American League in run-scored differential in 2024, but just had a lot of bad luck and weren't even one of the six playoff teams. So the expectation is that 2025 is going to be better. We are not in a bad situation financially. Uh, ownership increased the budget for next season by $6 million to $170 million. Uh, that gives us close to $19 million to potentially spend at this point. Obviously, we could tweak that if we want to lower our scouting or development budgets going forward if there's someone we want to bring on. We do have the option to do that. So feel like we've got some levers to press this off season in an effort to try to get better. Looking back at what we've done over the last month or so, nothing all that significant uh, at the end of September after the regular season ended. We did try to just clear some salary off the 40-man roster. Uh, we traded Taylor Clark, who has been a pretty useful reliever for us, along with Josh Dye, to the Yankees and got a minor league right fielder, Anthony Garcia, shortstop Sincere Smith, and a 19-year-old reliever. Uh, nothing too exciting. It was basically just to get some younger players with some options available for a couple of people that we didn't really want to be paying major league salaries to anymore. Similar trade, uh, we also traded away shortstop Ryan Kreidler, who's been kind of one of our key backups the last few years. But with the emergence of Moreno and Eddie Leonard, um, didn't necessarily have a spot for him on the major league team next year. Uh, we also traded uh, right-hander Jonathan Bolin, started one game for us this season. Um, Traded those two along to the Angels with Sincere Smith, who we had just picked up from the Yankees, for a 23-year-old pitcher, Bryce Hubbard. Looks like he could potentially be useful at the major league level. Uh, reliever Ben Hernandez, um, who is also uh, played in the majors this year, um, has some options left, so he may be uh, going back and forth between Kansas City and Omaha next year and got a little bit of cash from them. Uh, so those were kind of the, the primary trades that we made to kind of clean up the roster a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, Trevor Rogers looks like he is back from his injury as we prepare for arbitration. Um, we are offering Bubich, Rogers, Suarez, Aaron Ashby, Dylan Coleman, and Juan Yepes. We've made offers to all of them in arbitration. Only one-year deals for all of them, except for Dylan Coleman, who we offered a four-year contract at $1.1 million a year, which would take him out of uh, his final three years of arbitration and his first year of free agency. Uh, you can see that I uh, thought that he was going to have to cost about $1.3 million. Um, he has been a pretty respectable reliever for us over the past three years. Um, had a, a bit of a weaker season this year, but still his ERA plus and FIP was good. Um, three good pitches, good stuff, decent movement, um, kind of a back of the bullpen kind of arm that we'd be happy to have on the team. We've also made offers to a number of our minor league free agents, probably about 40% uh, of the minor league free agents who would still want to keep in the system. Uh, generally, they are players with uh, good personalities, catchers, starting pitchers to just help uh, ensure that our teams are as competitive as possible. The big decisions have to do with the pending free agents, however. And we've got some decisions to make there. Uh, Scott Barlow, a uh, longtime reliever for the Royals, is going to be a free agent. And then Brad Keller had a uh, player option. Uh, would have been optimal for us if uh, the solid starter had opted into his $4.8 million for this coming season. 
but he has since opted out. Um, if you look at the potential free agents, it appears that um, Keller is looking for significantly more than the 4.8 million he was going to be getting paid by us. If I could actually find him here, that would make this uh, somewhat more interesting to talk about. Why am I not finding Keller here? Oh, there we go. Because <laughs> um, I didn't have it sorted by potential. Um, he's looking for about 11.6 million. So uh, he is looking for a lot more than the 4.8 that we were going to be paying him. So obviously... Um, likely won't be bringing him back. The thing that's interesting, I did go to see whether we could uh, try to offer him a contract extension, and he doesn't like playing with Matheny. Obviously, he's been stuck with Matheny since we had his rights for the past seven years that he has been in the majors. But I am kind of thinking, do we make him a qualifying offer? Obviously, if we he would he would jump at the opportunity to make 18.9 million dollars for a year but if he since he doesn't like playing for Matheny does that just mean that he will reject the qualifying offer and go to free agency and we can potentially get an extra pick depending on on where he signs and how much he signs for I'm not willing to gamble. We we only have about 18 million, as I mentioned, so this is no time for us to be playing games. But um, if anybody knows the answer, would certainly love to hear it. It's it's kind of a unique situation where he says he doesn't like playing for the manager and doesn't even want to make us an offer. But I tend to think that if we submitted the qualifying offer for almost 19 million dollars to him, that he would accept it. And I'm I'm just not willing to take the risk of having to pay him that much next year. Uh, Joe Ross, also a starting pitcher for us uh, for the last two seasons, headed to free agency. And then Jeff McNeil is the real decision. Um, he's been a really good hitter in the season and a half since we picked him up for us. And he is looking for $19 million a year for the next five years. Um, as we head into this offseason, I kind of see two key holes that we want to fill on the team. One as always, is a top-line starting pitcher. And the second hole that I think we potentially have is a corner outfielder who can hit. And McNeil would certainly fit that role for us. Um, so I'm tempted to submit the qualifying offer, thinking that he won't accept it since he's looking for $19 million for five years. But my thought is if he's Asking for nineteen million for five years, he might end up signing at sixteen million a year for five years, even sixteen million a year for four years. Does that mean that there's a chance that he'd accept the qualifying offer? Um, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to kind of pay him full market value and only be locked up for one season. But by the same token, that would basically use up all of our money and and basically ensure that. He is the only thing that we can do in free agency, which which might be okay. Um, I just don't know that I want to get stuck in not being able to make that decision, putting it in the purview of the player to make that decision for us. Because when I look at the starting pitchers who are going to be available at free agent, um, Clayton Kershaw, Max Scherzer, and Zach Wheeler, um, there is potential that we would have enough money for a Scherzer or a Kershaw particularly, depending on what they're looking for. Um, Kershaw went to Baltimore last season from the Dodgers, pitched 26 games, 108 ERA plus. His 117 fit minus and 0 0.6 war were not not that exceptional for a player with his, uh, his history. Um, but would he be worth a flyer, you know, at around maybe $16 million for next year? That's kind of the situation we're dealing with. You know, do I feel better bringing on a starter Kershaw for around $16 million? Or do I feel better potentially using all of the money that we have left to bring back Jeff McNeil and then not be able to upgrade our starting pitching at all? And we're also going to be losing Brad Keller and Joe Ross. So 
that is the big decision that's going on in my mind right now as I kind of start preparing for what this offseason could potentially look like when we get to free agency. We should also be able to free up a little bit more money for free agents with the arbitration offers that we made, which are generally a little bit lower than, than what the team offer would have been. So that'll free up a little bit more money for us. But essentially, we've got two big holes to fill. And I feel like if we're going to target a Scherzer type or a Kershaw type, or a Jeff McNeil type to fill those holes, we're basically only going to get to fill one of them um, in free agency because we're going we're gonna to use just about all the money we have on one of those top kind of players, which is fine if it's only a one-year deal and we're not making a long-term commitment to an older player and we're making our team better, I think it would be okay. Um, but I'm really torn right now about whether we want to make the qualifying offer to McNeil or just let him free, hit free agency, um, risk not getting any type of draft pick compensation, but then have more flexibility to really add exactly who we want to in a few weeks when um, the free agent market opens. In thinking more broadly about our organization, the reason I may be willing to move on from McNeil is that we do have Peyton Williams in AAA right now. He was our fourth round draft pick a year and a half ago, number 55 prospect in the game. Has really developed well between um, AA and AAA last year. 32 homers, 98 runs driven in, 142 and 128 OPS pluses at the two different levels. Um, you can see he potentially is going to have exceptional power can potentially become a pretty decent contact hitter and then his gap power his eye and his avoid k's are all kind of average-ish but could be a very good offensive player for us um, the issue is that he is a very mediocre corner outfielder and he's also a pretty mediocre first baseman so um he's another kind of first base dh left fielder which between Juan Yepes and Vinny Pasquantino and Nick Prado. We've we've got plenty of those kind of guys on our roster right now, but he would be a bat that we could bring up to the major league level next year to replace McNeil if um if we decide to go that way. And then that would kind of be the last hole that I'm looking to fill as far as our everyday players would be plugging plugging him into that role and then that would let us potentially use all of the free agent money that we have available to try to go after one of the top starting pitchers you know whether it's Kershaw, Scherzer or Wheeler you know we well, won't be Wheeler out with that torn UCL for 10 months so it would really be Kershaw or Scherzer and then as a fallback, you know, we could bring back a Brad Keller, and there may be a way when you look at what Brad Keller, Denilson Lamette, Paolo Lopez, uh, Marcus Stroman, Chris Sale are looking for, that we could could potentially maybe bring on two of those guys, particularly if it was a Keller, Lamette, or Lopez. Um, so I think right now I've kind of talked myself into the fact that um, I'm probably not going to make the qualifying offer to Jeff McNeil just because I think there's a pretty good chance that um, he'd accept it. That would use up all the cash we're going to have. I, I kind of feel like the way to play things right now is to give an opportunity to Peyton Williams. Uh, we could potentially play him in left field, first base, or DH. Um, Juan Yepes is also going to be out there in a corner outfield. And the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet that um, is also pushing me to let McNeil go and bring up Peyton Williams is that I mentioned that Brad Keller had opted out of his um, player option with us, which I didn't want. Kike Hernandez opted into his player option, so he's going to be getting paid $6 million next year. Um, he is also, you know, a corner outfielder, essentially kind of a backup acceptable, uh, backup center fielder for us in a pinch, but because we already have him on the team for next year, um, that also kind of pushes me to maybe bring up Peyton Williams, let McNeil go. And then I feel between Juan Yepes, 
Kyle Lewis, Kike Hernandez, Vinny Pasquantino, and Peyton Williams. We've kind of got the five outfielders that uh, we kind of want on the team set. Um, and then we can use all of the money that we're heading into free agency to maybe target a difference-making t- uh, starting pitcher who hopefully um, with Trevor Rogers being back from his injury and the fact that we're hoping to slot Spencer Bauer into our starting rotation after he was exceptional in a late-season call-up would um, really result in a revamped uh, starting rotation for us, bringing on the number 14 prospect in the game for a full season. Uh, the guy we traded for last offseason back for hopefully a healthy full season and then a frontline starter in free agency. So I think I've talked myself into it. That's what we're going to do. Um, if things don't work out with bringing on one of those top starters, either a Scherzer or a Kershaw, we can always make a run at McNeil or Keller and free agency as a backup plan. So I think that's the way we're going to do it. And again, if anybody knows if a um, player like Keller says, I don't want to sign with your manager, are you safe giving him a qualifying offer that's way more than he's going to make to pick up the draft picks? I don't have the guts to try it because I think he'll say, eh, I've been with Matheny for five years for $18.9 million. I'll stick around for another season. And um, paying the money to Keller that we could have potentially paid to McNeil or a Kershaw or Scherzer would, would probably be about the worst use of that money possible, and I'm just not willing to take that risk. So would love thoughts from anyone who may have been in a similar situation in the past, but that is the high-level game plan as we are starting to kick off this off season. And we have quickly gotten all of our arbitration-eligible players signed, so that is positive. We've also signed uh, several of the minor league free agents that we had made options to. So now we're looking at about $19.7 million for free agents, $17.9 million for extensions. Um, hasn't technically flipped over to the 2025 season yet, um, but you can see McNeil, Keller, Ross, and Barlow are the three primary uh, players, as well as Emmanuel R- Rivera, who we just uh, waived in DFA to get him off of the Major League roster. Those are the primary uh, players left that we have that we won't have on this team next year. But I think with um, the potential to bring up Peyton Williams into the lineup, um, our plan is to go and hopefully make a big one-year contract for one of those big-time starters if and when they hit free agency. We've still got um, almost three weeks till free agency filing, so there's certainly a chance that uh, something could happen and uh, someone else may weirdly end up on the market or one of them may get signed by their current team before they hit free agency. So no guarantees that they're going to be out there, but between those two top starters as well as Keller and McNeil as backup plans uh, feel that there are options in a game plan for this team as we head into uh, free agency. And we've gotten into award season. Uh, one gold glove for the Royals. Nico Horner won the third gold glove of his career. Uh, he's won a gold glove each year here in Kansas City, even though he only played 75 games because of injuries last year. His reputation precedes him. Um, you can see that over the course of this season, um, fielding efficiency was pretty high, zone rating pretty high at particularly at second base, which is obviously where he spent uh, most of his time this year. Um, Pretty good range for a second baseman, too. So uh, nice season from Nico Horner, 73 double plays in 74 games, and uh, he is now a three-time Gold Glove winner. And other than the Gold Glove, uh, no significant awards for the Royals this season. Uh, Looking at the big winners, uh, Garrett Cole uh, won the AL Cy Young Award for the Yankees. Uh, National League, Blake Snell, unanimous winner. AL MVP, Carlos Correa of the New York Yankees. And uh, no votes for anybody on the Royals. And this is kind of a wacky one. 
Adalberto Mondesi, former Royal, the most valuable player of the National League, um, had just an awesome season. Look at that. 139 runs, 204 hits, and 119 stolen bases, 9.7 war. Um, that... Uh, that is a crazy one there. Um, you may remember from a long time ago that uh, we traded him for Nico Horner. So uh, we are pleased with our younger three-time winning uh, Gold Glove Award winner. But certainly if uh, we had seen, you know, a 30 homer, 119 stolen base, 308 batting average in Adalberto Mondesi's future... Um, would not have traded him away, but you can see um, his first two seasons away from us with the Cubs um, kind of performed much more in line with expectations. This is just a almost crazily unthinkable monster year for um, a player with his batting profile to just kind of burst out and have this massive season. So uh, congrats to Mondesi on the National League MVP award for the Phillies. And we're now just a couple days away from free agency, and um, I'm rethinking my thoughts on the pending free agents. Um, I think I am going to make a qualifying offer to Jeff McNeil. Um, my hope is that he doesn't accept it, and then we end up getting the compensation when he signs with somebody else. Even if he does accept it for $18.9 million, though, I think that we'll be potentially able to get something for him in a trade if we really want to get him off the roster and decide that we want to use that amount of money that we have to chase after a starter instead of Jeff McNeil. My thought is we should, if, if he's got a one-year contract for less than $19 million, He's a good enough hitter that we can probably get him off of our books. So my hope is that he doesn't sign it with us. But um, my thought is that even if he does sign the qualifying offer, if um, when we get to free agency it looks like we want to go for the starting pitcher instead of him, we should still be able to do so. So um, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. And I'm glad we pulled that audible at the last minute. Jeff McNeil did end up uh, declining the qualifying offer, so he is a free agent, and we now will have the potential compensation when he signs with somebody else. And obviously we'll have the um, potential opportunity to uh, sign him back if, if things go in a, a different direction than we're anticipating here. And we are at free agency. Um, seems like it is a pitching-heavy free agency class with Chris Sale, Brad Keller, Marcus Stroman, Zach Wheeler, Clayton Kershaw, and Liam Hendricks highlighting the free agent class. Um, the key hitters out there are Tim Anderson, Rowdy Telez, Brian Anderson, and Alex Verdugo, in addition to the aforementioned uh, Jeff McNeil. So... We are officially at free agency now, and uh, we've got even more to spend now that the uh, extra money for our 2025 budget is kicked in. So uh, about $24 million that we can spend on free agents. Um, interestingly, though, we don't have a ton of money available for extensions um, because we're going to have some... Uh, Players making more money next year. Juan Yepes, his contract is expected to go up. And then uh, notably, MJ Melendez is going to start making some real big money um, next season also. So um, interesting. And then uh, Aaron Ashby, Jose Suarez, Chris Bubich, um, also players who are going to be making more. Rodgers is going to be making more. So from that perspective, I think that our theory of trying to sign a big name pitcher to a one-year contract may be the um, most prudent way to go. The question is, who is it going to be? You know, looking at the starters, it looks like Scherzer did not make it to free agency. I wonder if he retired or just left. Um, Zach Wheeler out with a torn UCL, so he's not the answer. Um, Brad Keller and Denilson Lamette, um 
the top prospects, Marcus Stroman looking for the most money other than Wheeler, interestingly. Um, I guess the big question is whether we can get Kershaw signed to a one-year deal at the age of 36 years old or whether he's going to be looking for more than that because the uh, amount of money we have available for extensions is uh, is, is not optimal. So um, I am going to see if uh, Clayton Kershaw is potentially going to be our big acquisition. Great personality, obviously an excellent pitcher, even though he is uh, going to be 37 next year. He's looking for a three-year deal. Um, I'm just going to see if he'll go for one year with a relatively big number. Um, offer him even more than he's looking for. Let's see what he thinks about a one-year contract. He's willing to think about it. Um, so one year, $17 million. Um, our goal is to um, try to lock him up. We do have more money to spend if um, if we can possibly get him for a one-year deal. My hunch is he's going to want more than that. Um, in which case, it's going to put us into a bit of an interesting situation. Um because we're going to need to free up some money to, to pay him for the second and third season. Although I guess the benefit of us having this extra money now is that we could um, we could front load it relatively significantly, but uh, I can't imagine a uh, $4.8 million second season is going to be all that attractive to a pitcher of his stature. Um, but we could... Um, We'll see what happens. Uh, Going to be an interesting, uh, interesting decision for us, and obviously, it's it's kind of a different kind of mood move for these Royals to be um, chasing after a uh, top-notch free agent. But a a one-year deal with Kershaw um, hopefully will be the uh, key piece if we're able to get him signed to get this team um, finally into the playoffs next year. And we just finally heard back from Clayton Kershaw. Um, as of right now, he likes our offer, but it's early. It's only December 2nd. There's lots of time for that to change. But uh, right now, he favors our offer. Um, we will see whether we can potentially bring him on home in the next uh, couple of weeks. And uh, Nikki Lopez is hosting a charity golf tournament in the offseason. Uh, Kiki Hernandez and Mike Matheny were on the first tee with him this morning. Uh, hopefully it doesn't mean that there's a storyline where Nikki's going to be quitting to join the PGA Tour or the new Saudi Arabian Tour uh, coming up shortly. Have a feeling that won't be happening, but uh, good for Nikki Lopez to be uh, you know, raising money for charity. And we have some great news. Clayton Kershaw has signed the one-year contract. Uh, fans are very interested in it. Teammates very pleased with his leadership. So Clayton Kershaw has joined the Royals for the upcoming 2025 season. And wow, yeah, that was a huge boost in fan interest. We were down, I believe, in the low to mid-60s. Um, so it might have been a 10 plus point boost in fan interest. So that is some great news for these Kansas City Royals. Um, did get one piece of potentially distressing news, though. Um, our starting center fielder, Kyle Lewis, is flying to India tomorrow to see the famous guru. So we will see what the results of that are. Um, that can... Uh, Based on my previous experience with that storyline, uh, that can go in a number of different directions. Hopefully it's not going to have a significant impact on Kyle Lewis and his future with the team um, and his future ability. But regardless, um, we have landed Clayton Kershaw, so um, the offseason is a success for the Royals. feel like we have potentially made the big moves we need to take a huge step forward with this team in the upcoming season. Um, we'll put Clayton Kershaw right onto the Major League roster. 
and ask Mike Matheny what the staff is going to look like. And you can see uh, it's potentially going to look very different next year with Trevor Rogers hopefully pitching a full season, Clayton Kershaw, um, all-time great, joining us, and then Spencer Bauer, the youngster, um, having a full rookie season with us in the rotation, followed by Hayden Wisniewski and Jose Suarez. So, um definitely going to have a very revamped rotation for the 2024 season and now we can kind of spend some time figuring out what if anything we'd like to do on the margins um, we've got about seven million dollars to still spend and uh, because we didn't have to pay Kershaw for more than one year we've got about an equal amount for extension so we can uh potentially do some bargain shopping uh, with the free agents when we get into January. We're a day away from the Rule 5 draft, so going to kind of focus on that, see if maybe we can find anything interesting there before we engage with anybody else on the um, free agency. And our scouting director doesn't recommend that we pick up anybody in the Rule 5 draft. You know, there is a three and a half potential uh, player out there and three and a half stars overall, but it's the 35 year old reliever, Will Smith. Um, left handed arm, so it's in he's interesting from that perspective. Um, got good work ethic, really good stuff. Two great pitches with his fastball and a slider and a decent curve. Good control. Not a lot of movement, and he is an extreme fly ball pitcher. So probably will give up some dingers. As you can see, he gave up six and 44 and two-thirds last year, eight and 55 and a third in 2023. And even in 2022, he gave up 10 homers and 75 innings pitched. Um, he is tougher on lefties than he is on righties. Really great stuff in somewhat better movement. Um, you know, over the course of his career, let's take a look at his splits versus lefties at the major league level. And, um, you know, 2.77 ERA with a 235 batting average against, against lefties, um, 152 ERA plus 68 fit minus. Uh, as opposed to versus righties, where he's been very pedestrian, 4.61 ERA, 91 ERA, and an 88 FIP minus, um, 91 ERA plus. Um, so he is a good arm against lefties. Um, I just don't know if uh, picking up a 35-year-old in the uh, Rule 5 draft just seems like a weird thing to even be occurring. Um we could use another lefty in the bullpen, though, and I like the splits that he has. Um, you know, I would want to be using him in that lefty specialist role, but um, we've got room on the roster. It's definitely something to think about. I've spent a little time kind of looking through the rest of the uh, players who are available, and there's really no one exciting. Um, I think I'm going to take Will Smith. Um, you know, worst case scenario is we just um, send him back to the Astros if um, if he doesn't make our major league roster. Um, was an All Star back in 2019. Um, I think we're going to pick him. Um, worst case scenario, like I said, is we send him back to the. Uh, Astros, if he doesn't make the team coming out of spring training, on to the second round. Clearly, uh, no recommendation to take anybody there. So we will complete the Rule Five draft. Uh, only two picks. Um, the Miami Marlins picked Jahank Nessie Noel from the Guardians. Um, decent young first base prospect and uh we picked up the veteran will smith um so we'll see whether he uh can potentially slot in as a lefty specialist on our team next season and we did get some bad news but not surprising news um jeff mcneil is gone uh signed a big contract 17.2 million a year for four years with washington um, glad that we decided to make him the qualifying offer at the end there because we did end up getting a supplemental first rounder for him. So um, everything worked out perfectly so far in this offseason, getting a 
supplemental first round pick for the loss of Jeff McNeil and also bringing Clayton Kershaw onto the team to head our rotation. So now we are just going to be crossing our fingers that nothing crazy happens with Kyle Lewis and his trip to India to meet the guru. I believe this is based off of the old April Fool's uh, Sid Finch article from back in the 1980s with the Mets. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a Sid Finch... Um, tinge to this since he supposedly uh, was involved in a guru back in the day when he was allegedly throwing I believe 160 miles an hour so uh, for those of you who are uh, too young to know what I'm talking about with Sid Finch uh, you should google it uh, it was a uh, pretty famous story from about 40 years ago Looking at the remaining free agents, um, I am a little intrigued by Ramon Laureano uh, from the A's. Um, slightly above average major league bat, but um, pretty decent defensive outfielder with a good work ethic. And my only thought is that could we get rid of Kike Hernandez and then upgrade to upgrade to Laureano? Um, I mean, a very similar batting profile. Kiki's three years older. Um, you know, they look like the same player offensively. Um, and although Kiki has better defensive versatility with the posi potential to play all of those infield positions, um, his 60, 60, 50 outfield ratings are, I don't think, as good. Let's just look at career um, batting. You know, Kike is 88 OPS plus for his career, 86 WRC plus. So, um, oh, that's only versus righties. Okay, that seemed, seemed like it was too low. Yeah, 104 OPS plus, 102 WRC plus. And that lines up really well with what he's done for us the last couple years. You know, a slightly above average major league hitter. As I mentioned with... Um, you know, 60, 60, 50 for those outfield ratings. Looking at Loriano, you know, we're 60, 55, 75. So it's really just the better arm. He's actually not as, uh, not as overwhelmingly better. Um, he's just got that great arm out there, which is an asset in right field without a doubt. You know, I'd rather have him playing right field than Kike. Um, Looking at Laureano's career batting stats, 107 OPS plus and WRC plus. So he's a maybe a very slight upgrade to Kike Hernandez, but not enough that I want to go dumping Kike and then, you know, throwing an extra four or five million dollars to, to get Laureano signed up. So uh, it was a very brief flirtation in my mind, but uh, not something that's going to really go anywhere. There's there's really not a ton of um, big time offensive players, you know, um, available now. Um, you know, I don't think Ian Happ is the answer. Um, I think the the best case scenario is what we talked about bringing up uh, Peyton Williams to fill that spot from Triple A and. Um, Assuming that nothing crazy happens with Kyle Lewis and the Guru, I guess the other thing that we would want to think about is do we want to uh, try to pick up a center fielder for something cheap as just a kind of backup in case uh, Kyle Lewis goes off the rails. Um, hopefully it won't come to that, but... Um, Pretty confident that Greg Allen, who's looking for $1.9 million, is not going to sign a minor league contract with us. Um, probably the same thing with Jose Azokar, but uh, I'm going to just, in the interest of just being as conservative as possible, throw minor league contract offers to both Greg Allen and Jose Azokar right now as well as Jackie Bradley Jr. Just so if... Uh, if the um, storyline involving the guru goes way off boards with Kyle Lewis over the next couple of months, that at least we'll have a uh, competent defensive center fielder in our system. But hopefully it won't come to that. 
And Kyle Lewis is back from India. He's learned that life is not all about being the best. He thinks he's going to reorder his priorities and not sure if baseball is the most important thing in his life. So this could go off the rails pretty quickly. We've got options to release him, suspend him seven days, or do nothing. Um, the worry is that he be, could become a distraction in the clubhouse. And uh, right now we've got a uh, really awesome clubhouse. Um, <laughs> team cohesion is pretty good. Just about everyone is pretty happy. Um, no disruptive, outspoken, selfish, or unmotivated players. Um, and Kyle Lewis actually has a pretty good relationship with Mike Matheny. Um, you can see there's a fair amount of people, primarily pitchers, that don't have a great relationship with Matheny. But um, it is what it is. He's an old catcher. He's going to keep those pitchers in line. Um, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Um, it's been a long time since I've had this um, storyline. And uh, I don't know if they've changed the potential... Results here with OOTP 23 compared to past editions. So um, I'm not going to release them. If we do nothing, um, if we do nothing, it might not be good for morale. But if we do nothing, that may be the way to keep him around. I worry that if we suspend him seven days, that that's just going to make him uh, rethink his priorities even further. I'm going to do nothing. We'll see what happens. Some of you have probably been through this um, and are probably screaming at me because I'm doing the exact wrong thing right now. Um, would love to hear any thoughts and experience people have with the guru in OOTP 23 or even other versions down below. But we're going to do nothing and see what happens. Probably was too passive. I think I'm already regretting doing nothing. But um, I don't want to have to be looking for another center fielder. I want to keep this nutcase happy. And we've simmed ahead to mid-January now. Um, still not a lot too exciting out on the um, out on the free agent list. Um, I feel like the team roster is pretty well set with the addition of Clayton Kershaw and then the fact that we're planning on moving Peyton Williams up to the major league team. So I... I don't feel like we have to stretch, but by the same token, I do have over $7 million and wouldn't mind putting some of that money into uh, into some more players since we're going for it this coming season. But there's nobody that exciting out there. Um, you know, look who's available on the trading block right now. And there's, there's some more interesting names out there. So maybe I'll spend a little time seeing if, uh, you know, any of these guys out on the trade block um, might be something to uh, shoot for. Yeah, I don't feel like we have a ton of holes to fill on the team right now. I'm pretty pretty happy with what we've got. Um, Xander Bogarts is certainly interesting. He's making a ton of money, $35 million, and then he's got a player option for $35 million. So uh, <laughs> they're also looking for a ton for him, or maybe there's no one who makes it work because they're cash-strapped. But I would obviously want the Red Sox to be keeping... Uh, most of his contract uh, certainly could use a bat like that, but uh, that's not going to work out. Um, and then there's just nothing too much exciting right now. Um, I think, you know, I may be inclined to kind of um, keep the money. Um, it'll give us a lot of flexibility as we get closer to the trade deadline next year if we do want to take on some um, salary at that point. And could also, as we get closer to spring training, invest a little bit more into scouting or development. Um, also looking at um, player development, we actually want to bump up a little. We need a little more for our recommended draft slot amounts. Um, that's probably because of the supplemental second round pick that we picked up there. So I'm glad I checked on that. So we'll put a little more money there, and that has our finances Um should have our finances looking differently. How come that, uh, did I do something wrong? I don't think I hit tab or enter. There we go. That puts us down to about 5 million. And then, um, 
for the time being, going to up scouting another million dollars for next year also. Development, um, there's definitely diminishing returns higher than $30 million, so I don't feel like I have to chase on development right now. So uh, we'll keep things there. Um, obviously, maybe an opportunity to add somebody on a, uh, you know, bargain contract towards the end of free agency but um we may have done about all we're going to do at this point too we'll see what happens well we're almost to spring training still uh several players out there um ramon loriano mark canha zach wheeler victor caratini ian hap um as well as chris sale and pablo lopez are kind of the most prominent um I may try to make a low ball offer to Ramon Laureano. Um, as I talked about earlier, I think he's a very, 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 very tiny upgrade from Kike Hernandez, but um, he's also popular. Um, if we could bring him on board for a one-year contract at a uh, pretty reasonable amount, wouldn't be the um, worst thing in the world to do, particularly if that allowed us to trade away Kike Hernandez and open up a little more cash. So... Um, have a feeling it's not going to materialize since we're only going to be able to offer him about four million and he's uh, still looking for nine million a year so we're probably just going to insult him but uh <clears throat> never uh never um never had any or let's see if maybe he'll go for a minor league with major league options um $2 million salary if he's promoted. Um, I can't imagine he's going to go for that, but uh, yeah, yeah, the offer kind of was a joke. I wasn't really thinking he were going to go for it. We'll give him $4 million for one year. No, nope, he's not interested in that. So we gave it a try. We'll see if how things materialize over the course of spring training. And we're nearing the end of spring training. Uh, we did bring in Albert Almora Jr. and Andrew Benintendi in on minor league deals. Um, have a feeling they're both going to end up in AAA for us. Um, you know, I guess there's a chance one of them could make the team. Uh, Almora Jr. in particular is uh, insurance in case anything wacky happens with Kyle Lewis in the fallout of his uh, work with the Guru um, looking at um, our team chemistry, um, you know, it doesn't seem like anything funky has happened thus far with what's going on with um, with what's going on with um, the situation with Kyle Lewis. Um, Team chemistry still okay. No one has any complaints. He's not being disruptive. Obviously, there's uh, certainly potential for more to happen on that front. But uh, it's been a couple of months since that uh, storyline emerged. Um, obviously, who knows when we get to the end of spring training or the start of the season, there could be something funky happening there. But hopefully, uh, hopefully it ends up being no harm, no foul. I'm sure we'll find out over the next couple of months. Well, we've made it to the end of spring training. Uh, fortunately, no real significant injuries with one exception. Uh, we're waiting to hear about Kike Hernandez, uh, whether he's got a serious injury or not. Something is diagnosis pending on that front. But uh, otherwise, we're pretty helpful, pretty healthy. Uh, Will Smith, our Rule 5 pickup, um, took a much closer look at him um, during spring training. And uh, he does not look like someone that's going to make our roster. So we are going to uh, release him, return him to the Tigers. Um, have a bunch of other cuts to make. You can see we've still got uh, 21 pitchers up here on the Major League roster right now. So a lot of decisions to make. Um, but most importantly, Trevor Rogers, Clayton Kershaw, and Spencer Bauer are all healthy coming out of spring training, and we expect those three to be leading the way for us. Not a hugely serious injury for Kike Hernandez. He's going to be day-to-day -day with a sprained thumb for three weeks, but it will have a minimal impact on both his hitting and his throwing. 
Um, given that, you know, we've still got a couple of days till the season starts, I may just put them on the IL just to be cautious. Um, that would allow us to keep up uh, both Peyton Williams um, as well as Zach Desenzo, um, another young prospect, number 27 prospect in the game, um, who's similar to Peyton Williams, um, has some real crazy home run power, um, 26 homers and 90 ribbies for us last year in AAA. Uh, only batted 241 though, but might give us a, the, the issue is neither of them is going to be playing all that much, I don't think, um, which isn't ideal. Um, but it'll let us see them both at the major league level for at least a little bit of time. And who knows, maybe they'll, uh, take over and, uh, play so well that we, uh, think that we can do something different with, um, Kike when he gets back and actually looking at this, that puts Peyton Williams into the starting lineup against righties, um, playing left field. And it puts Zach Desenzo into the starting lineup against lefties playing DH for us. So they both will be getting some regular at-bats. So from that perspective, um, I think it's interesting. Uh, we will see how the season goes. Uh, lineup pretty similar to previous years uh, against righties. Second baseman Nico Horner, uh, Vinny Pasquantino in at DH. Bobby Witt Jr. at third, Juan Yepes in right, Peyton Williams in left, Nick Prado in first, Kyle Lewis in center, MJ Melendez at catcher, and Nicky Lopez will be our shortstop. Uh, the changes uh, against left-handers, uh, Desenzo goes into the lineup at DH instead of Vinny Pasquintino. And Eddie's Leonard goes into the lineup uh, playing right field. Juan Yepes ships over to left. And Peyton Williams uh, leaves the starting lineup. So uh, should be an opportunity over the first uh, few weeks of the season to see a little bit of Peyton Williams and Zach Desenzo, who's actually going to be batting cleanup against lefties for us. Um, so we'll get to see what they do. Looking at the pitching rotation, uh, Trevor Rogers, Clayton Kershaw, and Spencer Bauer are the top three, followed by Hayden Wisniewski and Jose Suarez. Austin Roberts, the youngster, is going to be closing for us. And then a few changes with uh, some of the youth that we've brought up, uh, hopefully for good this time, into the bullpen. Will Klein, Reed Goleman, RJ Dabovich, um, all hopefully up for good. Chris Bubich moves into a bullpen role, but, you know, last year that was his role also, and he ended up starting a lot of games for us after the injury to Trevor Rogers. Hopefully we won't have a repeat, and uh, the top starters will be healthy all season through, but we've got Bubich there if we need a spot starter, and then expecting big things from Aaron Ashby again as one of our top relievers out of the bullpen, left-handed setup man, along with Will Klein as our right-handed setup man. And moving to our preseason predictions, for what it's worth, uh, we are projected to win the American League East, and the 92-70 and 70 record we're projected for is uh, should be the best in the American League. Now keep in mind, uh, last year they predicted us for last. We finished third, but um, we should have had a much better season than that. So hopefully this is a sign that we can finally break out and get into the playoffs. Um, would be real disappointing to uh, miss the playoffs this season. There's no no doubt about that. Um, don't really have a ton of players expected to be among the top hitters. Um, don't have anybody actually among the top pitchers. Uh, projecting Kershaw to go 13 and seven with a 3.17 ERA, we would absolutely sign up for 187 and two thirds innings pitched from Kershaw at this point, as he is our one year rental. So. Uh, very optimistic for this upcoming season. I uh, think that this is going to be the year that the Royals finally do get into the playoffs. Expect us to win more than the 83 games we won last year. Uh, looking at what ownership hopes to see from us. Uh, want us to play 500 ball this year. Absolutely think we can do that. Uh, we need to acquire a Most Valuable Player Award winner, and we picked up Clayton Kershaw, so um, they're very pleased with that. And then our goal is to increase our attendance by the end of next year, and hopefully, according to ownership, reach the playoffs by next year. 
I don't think I mentioned this before, but uh, we only got a one-year extension from them last offseason. So we are once again playing for our future, but they did bump up our salary significant to 850000 So our goal is to not only have a winning record this year, but finally get off the schneid and get into the playoffs. It is playoffs or bust for the Kansas City Royals with a one-year rental of Clayton Kershaw to hopefully head up our rotation with Trevor Rogers. And with that, we are going to call it an episode uh, in the next edition of Old School Sports. We will be back with the start of the 2025 season. Until then, thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.